everyone. Uh, this is Ray King, and I'm going to be presenting the CARES Act Paycheck Protection Program update and the SBA Economic Injury Disaster Loan or EIDL loan uh, presentation this morning. Um, if you have any questions, I would uh, ask that you go into the Q&A section of uh, your screen. It shows up as Q&A on your uh, toolbar at the bottom and type your questions in there. And then at the end of the presentation, we'll review questions and provide answers. And if we don't have any answers, we'll follow up with the requester after the fact. Also, if you have any questions after the presentation, my email address will be up at the end and we will uh, follow up with you. You can email me with your questions and we can follow up. Next slide, please. So I said, I'm Ray King. I'm one of the attorneys here at Van Dievendra Black, and I've been following the CARES Act and all the guidance that's been put out by the uh, Treasury Department and the uh, Small Business Administration since uh, March 26, when the CARES Act first came out. I uh, principally practice in the area of commercial real estate uh, and lending um, areas which have been significantly uh, hit by the coronavirus uh, pandemic and I've been spending the last uh, six weeks advising clients about the, uh, the how to respond to the pandemic and most recently on the PPP loan and the EIDL. Um, I do want to point out that the information we're presenting today is for general information purposes. It's not considered legal advice. If you need legal advice, please do follow up with us. Next slide, please. Okay, so the CARES Act was adopted on March 27 of this year, and the intent of the CARES Act is to provide cash flow assistance to small businesses in the United States in order to allow them to maintain their employees on their payroll. Uh, the uh, second most recent act, which was the Paycheck Protection Program in Healthcare, Enhancement Act was signed by the President this past Friday on April 24. The, for our purposes, the only effect of this act was to increase the authorization of funds for the PPP loans and for EIDL. Next slide, please. Okay, now uh, to start talking specifically about the Paycheck Protection Program. The original CARES Act, there was $349 billion appropriated for those loans. Uh, the money was fully uh, allotted within two weeks and the SBA in the middle of uh, a Thursday shut down their uh, website for processing any more loans at that time. Uh, then when the, act, uh, when the new appropriation uh, was passed this past Friday, uh, there was an additional $310 billion of funds that were appropriated for the paycheck uh, for the PPP loan program, and the SBA reopened its portal yesterday at 10:30 in the morning to accept new applications for uh, those loans. Since the CARES Act was originally uh, adopted, the SBA has issued. Uh, interim final rules on April 2, 3, 14, 24, and 27, uh, addressing various uh, aspects of the program. And we were expecting guidance from the SBA on loan forgiveness yesterday, but we have not yet seen that guidance. The Treasury Department has also been issuing supplemental guidance that it updates on almost a daily basis. And we have been following all of that information. Uh, despite all of the um, interim final rules that have been uh, provided by the SBA and the guidance provided by the Treasury Department, there's still a number of open issues uh, regarding the PPP loans and the forgiveness of those loans that uh, remain unanswered. And as uh, information is made available, we will be publishing more information about that, supplement what we've already put out there. But the information we're providing today is up to date as of uh, this morning when I last checked for updates. Next slide, please. Okay, so the uh, initial issue with the Paycheck Protection Program is your company is going to have to meet the eligibility requirements 
they're actually uh, fairly simple. It's essentially any business, whether you're a corporation, limited liability company, partnership, and self-employed individuals and sole proprietorships can qualify. They must have been in operation, open for business on February 15th of this year, and with, except for a few exceptions, must have no more than 500 employees. The Treasury Department, the PPP loan is a loan you apply to a bank to receive. You do not go directly to the SBA. You apply to a local bank. And the Treasury Department has provided banks with guidelines on what they need to do in the review of those applications. And it's really, the guidance is, it's, it's very basic what the banks have to do. They need to check and see that the application is complete, that the calculations of payroll costs provided by the applicant appear to be correct. They don't have, actually have to audit or spot check everything. And the lender can rely upon the borrower's self-certification of eligibility that is uh, included in the application. We'll be talking more about that in a minute. Next slide, please. Uh, I mentioned you have to have less than 500 employees in order to qualify for a PPP loan. And this includes all employees, whether they're full-time employees, part-time employees, or people who do work for your business on some other basis. So it can include uh, 1099 employees as well, even though you cannot include their costs in your uh, requested loan amount. Um, However, in computing the 500 employees, the SBA affiliation rules do still apply and must be considered. So if your business is controlled by another business or has common management with another business, it may, may be necessary that in counting employees, you must count the employees of the other business, whether it be a parent or a sibling business, you can still qualify provided there are a total accumulated employees of less than 500. If it's over 500, then you may need to dig in deeper. There are certain exceptions to the 500 limit. Uh, most notably, manufacturing industries are, are exempted. They have a higher standard. They must still, however, qualify under the NAICS code um, uh, your NAICS code for your business and what the SBA authorizes is the maximum number of employees for that industry, which typically goes up to 1,000 or 1,200, depending on the specific industry you're in, but most are at 500 or less. The only exception to that are um, hospitality industry like hotels, which are not capped at 500. Next slide, please. In order to uh, determine how much you can borrow, uh, you need, well, first of all, how much can you borrow? What is the maximum loan amount you can borrow? Um, what you have to do is you calculate your monthly payroll costs, which is a defined term, which we're going to get to here in just a minute. And then you multiply that by two and a half. So it's essentially two and a half months of your average payroll. There are some uh, exceptions to that. And that is for your highly compensated employees, their salary for computing payroll costs is capped at $100,000. Now that applies only to the salary. Uh, other benefits or other compensation paid by the employer to the highly compensated may be included in the payroll costs, but uh, their salary is capped at $100,000 on an annual basis or $8,333 for the month. So it's your approved payroll costs multiplied by two and a half, taking into account that highly compensated salary need to be reduced on an annualized basis to $100,000. If you took out an idle after January 31st, you can add that 
to the payroll cost times two and a half, and that is the maximum amount of the uh, PPP loan that you can get. There is, however, another cap, and that is $10 million. So if your payroll costs multiplied by two and a half is in excess of $10 million, you will be capped out at the amount you can borrow uh, at $10 million. There are some special rules for seasonal employers on how to compute um, their average monthly payroll costs. Um, and in computing your average monthly payroll costs, you can rely upon either you, uh, the 12 months of 2019 and compute your average monthly payroll costs, or you can rely on the most recent 12 months prior to submitting your application for the loan. So whichever of those computations works better for your company, that's the one you should use. Next slide, please. So in uh, what are payroll costs that can be included in your calculation? You've got salaries, wages, commissions, other similar types of cash compensation paid to the employees. That is going to include things like, uh, needs to include things like tips or the equivalent. You can include vacation pay, parental family leave, medical and sick leave pay, any uh, dismissal or separation pay that has been paid to employees, uh, payments you make uh, for healthcare benefits, insurance premiums, those sorts of things, any retirement benefit payments that have been made, and the payment of state or local taxes assessed on the compensation of employees, except for PICA. FICA, that is not included. Next slide. Your payroll costs will not include, as I mentioned before, the salary of any individual employee that is in excess of $100,000 on an annualized basis, uh, the FICA portion that is paid by the employer. Uh, if you have any employees that whose principal residence is outside of the United States, uh, you cannot include their payroll costs. Uh, they do not qualify to receive the benefit of the program. And then uh, qualified sick leave or family leave that is allowed under the Families First Coronavirus Response Act does not, is not included either. But for the most part, everything else is included. Next slide, please. Okay, so as I mentioned, the uh, PPP loan, you make an application to a local banking institution. Uh, when the uh, program was first rolled out, all banks that were already participants in the SBA Section 7A loan program were authorized to make these loans. And since then, the Treasury has issued guidance indicating that all institutions insured by the FDIC are eligible to make these loans, and then some other non-depository uh, lenders are also eligible to make these loans. You will apply by filling out a, an application form provided by the Small Business Administration, uh, which you can obtain online or obtain from your lender. And that application, and, uh, which is very simple to fill out, um, includes the certifications that are required by uh, the CARES Act. And the one that has been getting the most attention recently is the one shown on your screen now, where you certify that current economic uncertainty makes this loan request necessary to support the ongoing operations of the applicant. On April 26th, the Treasury Department issued some supplemental guidance on what, borrow, what this means, what borrowers have to certify or by making the certification, what must borrowers take into consideration. Now, first, it's important to understand that under the CARES Act, the SBA rule that uh, borrowers must have exhausted their other borrowing opportunities. That has been suspended. So if you've got credit with a bank for a regular loan or on your line of credit, you are not required to draw down on your line of credit or seek another loan before you can apply for a PPP loan. 
but you must be able to certify in good faith that the PPP loan is necessary for the operation of your business. Now, if you read the certification, it doesn't talk about you have lost business. It doesn't talk about you know you're going to have a business downturn or that you've lost employees because of the coronavirus. It, the certification is that there's economic uncertainty, and because of that, the loan is necessary. The criticism has come about because some borrowers who received loans who were clearly not small businesses or not qualified. Uh, so in the guidance the Treasury Department put out, they said that if you have liquid, readily available sources of funds to your company, such that you are owned by a hedge fund or a large multinational organization, you cannot then in good faith make this certification. But otherwise, as a general term, they're not going to look behind this because this is a certif this is a self-certifying program. The borrower is making the certification in good faith on, on its own. If you if you subjectively feel that it is absolutely necessary for you to borrow this money because of the economic uncertainty or because you've actually incurred business downturn or effects because of the coronavirus, you can make the certification. Next slide, please. However, if you previously applied for an SBA loan, and since this guidance that came out a few days ago, makes you wonder about whether your decision to take out the loan was appropriate. And the most recent uh, interim, uh, final interim rule uh, issued by the SBA, they adopted what I'm calling the Shake Shack and Ruth Chris Safe Harbor, which says that if you took a loan out before April 24, so long as you repay it by May 7 in full, you will be deemed to have made the required certification in good faith. This is the kind of, if you return the money, there's no harm and no foul, and it will not be pursued further. Next. So assuming you uh, apply for a PPP loan, having calculated your average monthly payroll costs, and the loan is approved, and you receive your money, uh, what can you now spend that money for? You can, and so first of all, it must be expended within the eight weeks following your initial receipt of proceeds of the loan. So the clock starts the day you get the money. And then what can you use it for? You can use it for payroll costs. And these are the same uh, costs that went into calculating uh, what you can borrow. So for highly compensated, the PPP loan proceeds can only be used to pay $8,333 a month, plus other benefits, salary in excess of that must be paid from your own funds. You can use the proceeds to make payments of interest on an existing mortgage obligation of the company. You can use the funds to pay an existing rent obligation of the company. You can use it to pay utilities during this eight week period, and you can use it to pay the interest on any other debt obligations of the company. Now, in the instance of, of all of these payments, you may not pay ahead. In other words, it has to have been incurred and owed and paid within that eight week period. But do note that for interest you pay on other debt obligations, that that is not a forgivable expenditure. It is a permitted expenditure, and we'll discuss it more when we get to loan forgiveness, but that part will have to be repaid ultimately to the SBA. Next slide. There is a lot of good about the PPP loans. The first, that this is a non-recourse loan to the owners, shareholders, members of the company, with the exception that if they use the loan proceeds 
for to make payments that are not authorized under the CARES Act, the ones we just went over, there will be personal liability for that. There is no guarantee required, no personal guarantees for a PPP loan, and the SBA is waiving all of their usual processing and loan fees in making these loans. Next slide, please. There's no collateral required for a PPP loan. And the Department of the Treasury has issued uh, guidance that all payments of principal interest will be deferred for the first six months following a company's receipt of the PPP loan proceeds. So no payments whatsoever would be owed for the first six months. And then the best uh, benefit of this loan program is there, an there is an opportunity for loan forgiveness, in which case the portion forgiven, you do not have to repay at all. It essentially becomes a grant from the federal government. Next slide, please. So what can be forgiven? And it's essentially what was authorized with the exception of interest payments on uh, debt other than mortgage obligations. So during that eight week period, payroll costs that you pay, interest on a covered mortgage obligation, no principal portion is forgivable, the payment on a rent obligation and utility payments. Those amounts can be forgiven and would qualify for loan forgiveness. Next slide. Now, in order to receive loan forgiveness, you must apply for loan forgiveness and you apply to the lender where you obtained the loan. Um, the CARE Act and the guidance indicates that there will be an application for loan forgiveness. No one has seen that yet. It has not been published, but it should be made available relatively shortly. There are uh, Requirements that must be met for you to qualify for the loan, loan forgiveness, uh, one of which is you are required to maintain the uh, same number of full-time equivalent employees uh, during the eight-week period as you had during a measuring period uh, prior to the coronavirus pandemic that we'll get to in a minute. And not only are you going to have to certify the number of full-time equivalent employees, you will have to provide documentation uh, verifying who they were and what payments were made. And then you're gonna have to provide documentation uh, to support all of the payments you made, not just the uh, payroll payments and benefits payments, but uh, for the mortgage payments or rent payments, um, uh, utility charges, you're going to have to provide the supporting documentation on that. Um, there have been a, a, num a number of questions about how are you to calculate the full-time equivalent employees for the purpose of determining uh, your loan forgiveness under the PPP loan program. The SBA has not yet come out with any guidance on how to do that since there are a couple of different ways to do it. So the recommendation right now for the purpose of just kind of uh, doing your uh, measuring to see if you will qualify for loan forgiveness is you take the total number of hours worked by all employees during a week, uh, divide that by whatever your work week is uh, at your company, whether it be 40 hours a week or 35 hours a week, and the resulting number is your number of full-time equivalent employees. Next slide, please. And then the question is, when do you have to apply for loan forgiveness? So you need to apply essentially within 30 days after your eight week period has run. So between 60 and 90 days after you first receive money, uh, you need to apply for loan forgiveness, um, and then the banks have been advised that they have essentially a maximum of 60 days to process the application, and within that 60 days, you'll be notified 
if you qualify for loan forgiveness or not. If you qualify for loan forgiveness or all or a portion of your PPP loan is forgiven, uh, the CARES Act specifies that your forgiven PPP loan will not be included on the 20 tax return for your business as gross income, as would happen with other loans that are forgiven. Normally, if your company owes a loan, that loan is forgiven, the amount forgiven has to be included as gross income on your income tax return. That is not required here. Uh, you do not have to report it as income. But there is still an open question as to whether you can deduct as expenses those payroll costs, mortgage interest, uh, or utilities that you paid with the proceeds of a forgiven PPP loan. We are expecting guidance on this. Right now, it is expected that those would not be deductible on your 2020 tax return as expenses, but we are expecting more guidance. So you will need to take the lead from your CPA when preparing your taxes for 2020. Next slide, please. Okay, so as I indicated, the primary purpose of the CARES Act is to ensure the payroll is maintained for companies, for small businesses, uh, uh, as a result, you know, during the coronavirus pandemic, during this eight week period. If you maintain the payroll and maintain an equivalent number of full time equivalent employees, then the whole amount can be forgiven. If, however, you are do not maintain the same number of full-time equivalent employees during the measuring as compared to the measuring period. Or the uh, amount of pay those employees receive is uh, has decreased by more than 25% over the same period in the prior year, then there will be an adjustment down of the forgiveness. Uh, the good part is it doesn't disqualify the forgiveness. There's a proportionate reduction in what is forgiven. So the measuring period for full-time equivalent employees is from February 15, 2019 to June 30, 2019, or January 1, 2020 to February 29, 2020. You can pick the period which works best for your company. And if you did not maintain uh, the same number of full-time equivalent employees, use the formula shown on the screen. And that then shows the amount of forgiveness that's allowed and the amount that will not be allowed. And it's essentially the same process if the payroll falls below 75% of the payroll, average payroll for the same measuring periods. So if you have any portion of your loan that is not forgiven, that amount remains a loan and must be repaid. It is to be repaid within two years with interest at the rate of 1% per annum uh, which begins to accrue on the date you first receive the proceeds of the loan. So even though some of it may need to be repaid, it's fairly uh, reasonable uh, terms for the repayment. Next slide, please. That's uh, about where we are on the PPP loan program. We are still expecting some additional guidance, principally on the loan forgiveness aspect of it. And once we have that guidance, we will publish that information on the Van Deventer Black website. And we'll have another one of these programs to go in detail uh, with you about that guidance. Now moving on to the Economic Injury Disaster Loan Program or the EIDL. Um, 
This is uh, the idle as an existing uh, SBA program. Uh, it's uh, been around for uh, for a number of years for every disaster um, that there is, where there's a declared disaster such as a hurricane or tornadoes, uh, things of that nature. Next slide. So in the CARES Act, there was uh, $10 million appropriated for idle loans. And then last Friday, there was an additional $10 billion appropriated for these loans. Next slide. Now, as just a reminder, as I already indicated, if you previously got an idle loan after January 31st of this year, you can include the amount of the idle loan in your PPP loan request and uh, in essence refinance your idle loan with the PPP loan and get all of it or substantially all of it forgiven through the uh, loan forgiveness process. So with the uh, idle, how much can you borrow? borrow? You can borrow up to a maximum of $2 million. And as part of that, you can get a quick fund or an advance payment of $10,000, which will be a grant and doesn't have to be repaid. The balance does have to be repaid. The good news is the entire country has now been declared a disaster area uh, for uh, because of the coronavirus pandemic. So it doesn't matter what state you're located in or what county, um, every jurisdiction in the United States qualifies for these loans. The loans are on uh, very reasonable terms. Uh, the interest rate is 3.75% with a 30-year term for the loan. The actual size of the year loan, which is capped at $2 million, is based on your operating costs. And um, it's essentially six months of operating costs up to the $2 million. You can use idle proceeds to pay fixed debts, payroll, accounts payable, other uh, bills of the business that uh, would have ordinarily been paid had there not been uh, the disaster here, the coronavirus. Um, now, these are to cover costs. These are not loans that are intended to cover lost sales or profits or use for the purpose of expanding your business. Next slide, please. Okay, the idle loans are really more like true loans. Uh, these are loans that are made directly by the SBA. So you do not go to a bank for these loans. You apply for these loans through the SBA portal. And if you were paying an inch attention to the news yesterday, you probably heard that the SBA website crashed a number of times yesterday uh, due to the activity of people seeking idle uh, money and for the uh, uh, information, the communications from banks that were making the PPP loans. So it, since it's more like a real loan or it is a real loan, there you will have to provide a credit history on the business. And these are loans that will have to be repaid um, unless you otherwise uh, qualify for loan forgiveness, which is for idols much rarer. Next slide, please. If you are requesting under $25,000, there's no collateral required for an idle loan. However, if you are requesting over $25,000, collateral is required. The SBA traditionally takes real estate collateral. They will also take an assignment of accounts receivable, uh, perhaps an assignment of uh, funds in a bank account held in reserve. However, the CARES Act and the guidance makes it clear that lack of collateral will not disqualify you from uh, getting an idle. 
Uh, it was preferred. If it's available, you have to give it. If not, uh, you can still get um, an economic injury disaster loan. Next slide. As I indicated, you do not go to a bank to apply for these loans. You go to the SBA website and the link, information on the link to the application process is there. It's entirely filled out online and you either enter information or you can upload the requested documents. Uh, there's no cost to apply for these loans. If you are approved for the loan, there is no obligation to take to accept the money. You can be uh, approved and then not take the money and there's nothing to repay. As I indicated, unsecured up to $25,000, above $25,000, the SBA will requesting collateral for the loan. And you can get $10,000 as a forgivable, forgivable loan that's paid within three days of loan approval. And that is a request is simply a check box on the online application to request that $10,000. So to get an EIDL loan, you go to the SBA website and you complete the SBA loan application online. That's the SBA form five. Uh, you must provide tax uh, an authorization for the SBA to obtain tax information on the borrower for the applicant that is, plus for each owner of the business who owns 20% or more of the business, the SBA, We'll, doing, we'll be conducting a credit check on them and getting tax information on them as well. You must also provide the most recent tax return for the applicant, a personal financial statement for each of the owners who own more than 20% of the business, which you can either complete an SBA Form 413 online or simply upload an existing financial statement for, for each of the owners. You have to provide a schedule of liabilities of the company and some additional financial information. The SBA is, has indicated that the approval process is going to be approximately 21 days from the date the application is complete and uploaded to the SBA. And then you will receive funds within 30 to 45 days after signed loan documents are delivered to the SBA. So once you're notified that your EIDL has been approved, the SBA will email documents to you, loan documents to you, which must be signed and returned to the SBA. The initial guidance is the SBA was requiring wet signatures on all documents for idols that may have been relaxed by now, but right now, you, but you should plan on having to return the original signed documents. And then in 30 to 45 days, you'll get the loan proceeds, except for the $10,000, which you could get within three days of approval. Next slide. And that's what there is on the idol at this time. There is still money available for both of these programs. Um, so if you haven't applied, now's the time to do so. It's expected the, the proceeds will last just like the last time, no more than about two weeks, uh, even though there has been some money returned to the SBA from uh, borrowers who uh, probably should not have gotten uh, these loans. All right, I'm going to quickly run through the questions that have come in and respond to those. And um, before we wrap up. So the first question is, can the funds be used for any bills that are for services rendered prior to getting the money yet you pay during the eight week period? This is an open question right now for which we do not have an answer. The CARES Act indicates that the proceeds can be used for approved expenditures that are incurred and paid during the eight week period. Commentators don't know if that means this is, 
that both the obligation must have accrued during the eight week period and paid, or it could be accrued before and paid during the eight week period or paid during the eight week period, even though some of it may not be accrued until afterwards. We are expecting clarification on this point since all the commentators are talking about it, but the safe route is to have it, if it's incurred and paid during the eight week period, it would qualify, assuming it was an allowed expenditure, it would qualify for loan forgiveness. So if you receive the money in the middle of a pay period, and then you make a payroll payment, it is possible that the portion of the payroll from before you receive the money would be, have been accrued prior to the eight week period and you may not get loan forgiveness for that amount. But utilities can, uh, can you use PPP monies to pay? There is no specific guidance on that other than your traditional utilities, water, sewer, gas, electric certainly qualify. Um, I believe your cable would certainly qualify. Uh, beyond that, I think you would probably be stretching the uh, stretching the intent of the act, but those certainly do qualify. Do bonuses count as wages under the PPP uh, such that it would be forgivable? If they use our bonuses, which would normally be paid and they fall in line with past practice, I think that is, is the answer. Yes, it would be. If you are paying bonuses with this money simply to pay bonuses, that would in all likelihood not qualify for forgiveness of the loan. Is the idle $10,000 grant part of a forgivable portion of the PPP? The $10,000, you need to include the entire amount of your idle loan, if you already have one, in your PPP loan application, so it would all be forgiven. Can you use the employees to stay at home if the construction site is shut down? Yes, it is. The guidance isn't entirely clear on this, but the bulk of the guidance is you may be paying people not to work if you're using these proceeds, but that is the intent is to maintain your payroll and keep employees to the maximum amount possible off of unemployment. So I think that is correct. You can do. You can make those payments, even if they're not working. If your uh, payroll processor charges you a monthly processing fee, does that count as a payroll cost? I do not know the answer to that question. That's one we'll have to look at. So whoever asked that question, if you'd send it to me, we'll get back with you on there. Okay, so the next question is about the $100,000 limit on salaries. So if you have an employee who makes over $100,000 a year from the PPP for qualifying for a PPP loan, you can only include the $8,333 a month. And for making payments during the eight week period, you can only use $8,333 a month proceeds per month for that payment. You can still pay that employee more than the $8,300 a month, but you should pay that with other funds of the companies, not with the PPP loan proceeds. I know mortgage interest is a qualified expense, but can you include interest on installment notes as a qualified expense? Yes, you can pay debt of the company, interest on debt of the company with PPP loan proceeds, but only the interest paid on a mortgage obligation would be forgivable. The rest is an allowed expense, but it becomes a PPP loan that you would have to repay over the next two year period.
Okay, I'm skipping some questions because I'll, I'll have already covered them. So do rent payments have to stay constant with the usual rent payment? Can you pay more than you normally would? You cannot pay ahead. Uh, so you can't you know, pay two or three months ahead with these funds. You need to make your regular uh, rent payments with the PPP loan proceeds. Okay, the next question says, we couldn't get an application for the PPP loan through our bank at which we had our accounts. Uh, so, so we had to open payroll expense. So we had to open an account with another bank. Okay, and then the question is, can you transfer the funds back to your original lender, uh, Bank One, uh, to for application purposes? Yes, you do not need to maintain the funds on deposit in the bank where you get your PPP loan. Uh, you can expend those funds as normal, uh, as you normally would. You must keep good records on how you are expending the funds uh, so you can provide the appropriate documentation with your loan forgiveness application. Uh, we have been recommending that uh, companies that get the PPP loans put that money in a separate account so they have it segregated, know exactly how much they have left at the end of the eight week period and keep track of all of it as it goes out, even if it has to go out to a payroll account or some other account to make the necessary payments. Do the FTE full-time equivalent employees have to be the same employees or just the same number? Uh, it, every indication is it's the same number of employees, not the same employees. You can still fire employees. You can still terminate them for cause during this period you may have to replace them, but you can replace them with another uh, employee. It doesn't have to be the same ones. Um, 1099 employees are not eligible to receive uh, PPP money. They are, um, they are able to apply on their own. Uh, they're, they don't get salaries, therefore you may count them for getting the loan, but they're not eligible to receive the proceeds of the loan. Next question is, if the full amount of loan is forgiven, do you still pay interest? No, the forgiveness is for principal and interest, so you would pay nothing if the full amount is forgiven. Okay, when will the idle open up for applications? Uh, this is a website problem for the SBA. Uh, I've not heard anything about there being website uh, problems today. Um, so you should be able to go on today or tomorrow to apply for the idle loan if the system is, is not up. I would suggest you just keep at it until you get in and complete the application. I'd have all the information ready so you can get in and out as quickly as possible. Next question is, do we expect the loan forgiveness to change retroactively? There's, there's a lot of information uh, floating around now about some negative comments that have been made. Uh, this is one of the reasons we're waiting for the guidance from the Small Business Administration on what will and will not be uh, allowed to be forgiven, but the CARES Act is very straightforward. Uh, if you spend the money, if you are a qualified eligible borrower, you spend the money on eligible expenses and your application contains all of the appropriate information, the loan will be forgiven. The uh, discussions in the Senate uh, that have recently been reported uh, about who should not be able, able to get loan forgiveness in my reading of the CARES Act would require an amendment to the act, which isn't likely to occur before the forgiveness is granted. Okay. 
And I think that covers the questions. If you have any other questions, or I didn't get to your question, you think I looked over it, please feel free to email me and we'll see about getting back to you. Uh, we will have a follow-up program once we have more guidance on loan forgiveness, which we hope will be, uh, we'll be able to do that this week so you can plan accordingly. Thank you and thank you for joining this morning.